Hare Krishna, welcome back to my channel. So, we are going to start with the fresh start, 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And uh, we are going to uh, know something very interesting in this chapter. So, Lord Krishna has told to Arjun that description of divine and demonic traits and with their fruits. So, those people who in this world does the demonic things you know like witchcraft spells you know like those black magic and the divine things that people do you know letting go of their love without any selfish means and doing something with money or with cash or with some you know with humanity to some poor people some needy people or within the family also so that's called a divine thing and what are their fruits there is also the mention by Krishna of the outlook of the people who embrace the demonic nature, having a disclination for virtuous actions, and how impure conduct and ambitions uh, with fruit of the man, um, you know, embracing the demonic nature, evil nature of the people possessing demonic disposition and their evil effect, and also inspiration to act according to the ordinance of the scriptures by being free from desire, anger, and greed, which are the roots of all demonic traits. So in the last chapters, you know, uh, Lord Krishna could not get an opportunity to explain like in great detail the divine and demonic natures because Arjun went on putting questions and questions, you know, because he was like a little bit shivered after seeing he's such a, you know, big supreme being form in the 11th chapter as you remember. So now he gets an opportunity, you know, to explain the divine demonic natures in detail. So he starts the topic in this 16th chapter with this very first shloka, Shri Bhagavan Uvach, Abhyam Sattva Sanshodhi Gran Niyog Vivasthiti Danam Damascha Yagyasya Swadhyayastava Arjarvanam. So fearlessness, the Lord said Krishna, Fearlessness, purity of mind and heart, steadfastness in yoga for knowledge, charity, self-control, sacrifice and study of the scriptures, you know, austerity, means the Indian scriptures, the Vedas, austerity and straightforwardness. So the undeluded person who does know me as the supreme person worships me with the whole being. It means that he worships the Lord Krishna with exclusive devotion. That's when a devotee has only the main aim of his life to God realization, divine nature, in remain in him. Therefore, Lord, in the first three verses of this chapter, describes divine nature pertaining to sentiment, conduct, and glory. Now, in the third shloka, Dejaha Shama Dhati Shosha Madroho Nati Manita Bhavanti Sampadam Devi Mabhi Jatasya Bharata means radiance, forgiveness, fortitude, purity, freedom from malice means Lord Krishna is telling the traits of a divine nature. O ascendant of Bharata, there are the marks of him uh, who is endowed with divine nature. So the power, the vigor of great many strivers whose company enables sinners to renounce their sins and engage them in divine nature people, people who are very good in nature, have very humanly who do justice to people even if they are like in a bad condition or even they sacrifice their own profit for the other people profit you know are called divine nature personalities and even the sinners of this world if comes into the friendship and connection of those divine nature people even they can also get the moksha you know the immortality they have that power so the evil doers hesitate to perform evil deeds before those great men and strivers and these evil doers certainly change their actions and get engaged in virtuous deeds before men of divine traits you know in the face of a man of anger also other persons have a feeling of fear in fact in acting uh, you know, against his will this is an upshot of anger so now having described the marks of a person you know endowed with divine nature the lord in the next verse in the next shloka, that is the fourth shloka of 16th chapter, discusses in brief the marks of one who hankers after worldly pleasures and prosperity and is endowed with a demonic nature. So, Dambho Darpodbi Namasya Krodha Parushya Mevicha Agyanam Chabi Jatasya Par Sampad Masurim means hypocrisy, arrogance, pride, anger, harshness, and ignorance. These are the marks of Parth, if him, you know, has demonic nature. 
so a person may pose as a righteous virtuous scholarly wise person even though he has not such virtues and to show more than he possesses to show himself as an ascetic in spite of being sensuous on strenuous and feelings so he may conceal his good conduct eat forbidden food and perform forbidden actions in the company of evil persons in order to win respect and praise by pleasing them and when a person attaches too much importance to his body life breath and wealth property honor praise and fame he pretends to be what he is not hypocrites appear in him it means arrogance pride of possessions of riches property prosperity you know property rank position family status is known as that pah because it because of this feeling a man is proud of the things that he possess you know and after that a man has to repent for wrong actions which he performed overpowered by anger and when he is angry he harms not only others but also himself so moreover he can do wrong to others only if they have suffered it so as fruit of their wrong actions but he commits a sin and spoils his nature his spoiled nature will lead to him the hell and pain full forms of lives anger is the foremost enemy of a person because it is abiding in the body destroys the body in the same way as abiding in wood burns the wood everyone including the nearest and dearest one is afraid of angry man in the 21st verse of this chapter you know um anger has been called in the gateway to hell so when a man's desire is not fulfilled anger ensues and from anger arises delusion from delusion or confusion of memory from which comes loss and from loss of reasons one never when goes to complete ruin now we come to the fifth shloka devi sampadvi mokshay nibandha asuri mata mahashri sampadam devi maji todasi pandava divine nature is conducive to liberation and the demonic leads to bondage so great so grieve not he tells to arjun that you grieve not o pandav that thou born under divine endowment so the demonic nature is conducive to bondage and the cycle of birth and death so long as a striver does not remove his egoism his virtuous actions will not lead him to salvation okay so even these may lead him to higher regions it, it might it means that as long as he has a desire to maintain his body and to enjoy sense objects in his ego the divine creeps so the seed so now the question arises is how to um, how a man should attain salvation the answer is that as a roasted or a boiled seed does not germinate similarly when a striver only has the aim of god realization all the worldly seeds perish and you know his egoism changes and he attains salvation so a person has attachment for his body life press so that he could go on living happily and enjoying honor praise and pleasure it is because of this attachment that he cannot attain salvation and because attachment to modes of nature is the is the is the you know uh, cause of birth in goods and evils and it means that he being attached to nature may go even to the realm of brahma but will not be free from bondage arjun in mahabharat among the you know pandavas the five brothers in mahabharata arjuna especially possessed divine nature so lord krishna asked arjun whence this unmanliness came upon him you know because krishna himself was like from where this grief has come from you that you don't want to fight this war just for the sake that they are your family members and ancestors and older people so it means that this unmanliness was not naturally present in him so arjuna asked lord krishna the means to attain to the highest goods or salvation even in the battlefield so it shows that arjun possessed divine nature otherwise how could he reject the offer of urvashi a heavenly damsel outright so therefore assuring arjuna lord asks him not to grieve because he is born with a divine nature so guys in the sixth um, shloka of 16th chapter please come on the sixth shloka ro bhut sargo lokasman dev asur evata devo vistarasya prokta sevan tatma so all beings possess sentiment in the written portion some of them having the female sentiment sentiment are inclined towards the god while some having the discrimination for god and the after the you know in sentiment so that they belong to this class of this type of this class so there are two kinds of things the word like this is the divine
that in the modern of world falsehood it is medical and impeccable so having such feelings we must be able to regard the impossible with the better evil he further tells about the demonic nature in the seventh shloka which is pravartim cha nivartim cha jana na vidura suraha na shosham shocham napi cha charo ra satyam teshu vidyate okay now lord describes the order of development of demonic nature so um, human beings possessing a demonic nature because of lack of fine breeding to not know what should be done and what should be done what at how it should be done what is purity what is impurity of body food speech and behavior they do not know the difference between falsehood and truth so they became disinclined towards god what is truth they do not believe in god okay righteousness dharma and do not follow their ordinance they consider the creation to be evolved through mutual contra- you know contact of men and women brought about by lust and thus these atheists uh, inflict pain on others and themselves you know uh, suffer downfall now the question arises how to know what to do and what to refrain from and these can be known through preceptors saints and scriptures so persons who believe in theories eat drink and marry do not realize what they should do and you know what they should refrain from in them like animals divine nature remains concealed So in order to, in which a man are endowed with demonic nature the same order of life distribution disappears so the man endowed with demonic nature look upon the maintenance of their life breath as the highest goal and therefore they can only think of their own happiness comfort you know and luxury now there is another shloka the beautiful one the 12th shloka i would like you to see the 12th shloka of 16th chapter and if you do not have any bhagavad gita at the moment you can just listen to the summary you can you know have a little bit of glimpse what is it about asha paashashate dradda kam krodha parayana ihante kam bhoga atmanya nath sanshyam so bound by hundreds of ties of hope given over to lust and anger this strife must pour for self by unfair means for sensual enjoyment So people who are endowed with the demonic nature are bound by hundreds of ties, hopes that they have to amass force of wealth, they will win name, fame and you know, honor and they have to be free from diseases and so on. Even having possessed millions of rupees, they hope to gain more and more. now i come to the 24th shloka okay uh there are total 24 shlokas in the if i said 25 i'm so really sorry about i apologies but is there are 24 shlokas in 16 chapter and uh, the it's, it's a shlok tasma chatram pramanante karya karya vyavasto gyatva shastra vidane kam kam karto mere hasi therefore let the scriptures be the authority in determining uh, who ought to be done and what ought not to be so having known what is prescribed in the ordinance of scriptures how shouldn't uh, act according in this world okay so the lord in the you know seventh words declared that people of demonic nature don't know how to do and refrain from and people of demonic nature do not know what to do and what to refrain so uh, those who are attached to their life breath to not 
know what should be done and what should be refrained from so they are especially inclined towards demonic nature and therefore lord krishna advised arjun to act according to the ordinance of scripture the the conduct and the words of saints and great souls are also based on scripture so obedience to these is also obedience to the ordinance of the scriptures because they have become saints and great souls and by following the ordinances of scriptures in fact ordinances of scriptures are the ideas precepts and you know principles like so god realized okay so um arjun thought that sin alone would accrue to him by killing his kinsmen in the battle so the lord declared happy are the kshatriyas member of the warrior class who are called upon to fight in such a battle that comes of itself as an open door to heaven and here the lord says that he should discharge his duty according to the ordinance of the scriptures because it cannot lead him to bondage an act which is performed with selfishness you know and with pride lead leads to bondage while the action which is performed in an arbitrary way against the ordinance of scriptures leads to ruin so here you know uh, thus with the words om tat sat the names of the lord in the upanishad of bhagavad gita the knowledge of brahma is supreme of the scriptures yoga and dialogue between shri krishna arjun this is the 16th course designated so there is the yoga of division between the divine and demonical i see you in the next video please subscribe like and share